Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new GMK Nook Box 2. Now, you might be familiar with the original Nook Box. I've done a video on it. This is a super small form factor, 4K Windows Mini PC, powered by a J4125 Celeron CPU. It actually turned out to be a pretty cool little mini PC, but GMK is back with a more powerful unit. It will up the form factor on this, so it's not going to be as small as the original Nook Box. But we should get way better performance than the original, given that we have a much more powerful CPU in this unit. As you can see here, like I mentioned, the form factor has definitely been upped uh, by quite a bit compared to the original Nook Box. But we do have more I.O. and internal expandability with the GMK Nook Box 2. So along with the mini PC, we're also going to receive a 65 watt power adapter. And I thought they'd include a vase mount here, but unfortunately it's not inside of this box. We only get the power adapter, power cable, and our user manual. As for I.O. on the Nook Box 2 up front here, we have a 3.5mm audio jack, USB Type-C, which will support video out, and two USB 3.0 ports. Moving over to the right-hand side, we have a micro SD card slot, good up to a 1TB card. On the right-hand side, not much going on here. But around back, we have our power input, dual full-size HDMI ports, two more USB 3.0 ports, and gigabit Ethernet. Taking a look at the specs for the CPU, we have the Core i5-8259U. This is a 28-watt quad-core CPU with a base clock of 2.3 GHz and a boost up to 3.8. As for the GPU, this actually has the Iris 655 graphics instead of the 630, running at 1050 MHz. Unfortunately, the RAM is running in single channel right out of the box, but we have an extra free slot. This comes with 8GB of DDR4 running at 2400 MHz, a 256GB M.2 SSD, plus we have room in here for a 2.5 inch drive, be it mechanical or an SSD. 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and this is running Windows 10 Home. Now before we jump right into testing, I just wanted to give you a look at the internals here. It's actually pretty easy to get the top off. Uh, that was my power button that fell off. There's four screws in the bottom. This does come with an adapter for an SSD, and it'll mount right in the top here. Now, the RAM on this is upgradable to 32 gigabytes, but right out of the box, it has an 8 gigabyte stick, single channel, and as we know, with integrated graphics, going dual channel is definitely the way to go. We can get a big performance hike when it comes to the GPU side of things by going dual channel. So for this video, I'm actually going to be installing two sticks here. We're going to keep it at 8 gigabytes, same speed, 2400 megahertz, but we're running in dual channel here, and keep in mind, this will help out with GPU performance. Okay, so here it is. This does come pre-installed with Windows 10 Home. As you can see, we have that Core i5-8259U at 2.3 gigahertz. Remember, I added that extra stick of RAM, but we're still at 8 gigabytes at 2400 megahertz. And the built-in Iris Plus 655 graphics, which does outperform the older UHD 630, but it doesn't have anything on the Iris XE graphics. This is not a high-performance gaming mini PC, but if you needed something small to use as an everyday desktop for web browsing, email checking, light video editing, photo editing, something like this would work out just fine. Most people just use their computers for web browsing. So let's see if we can uh, head over to GMK's website. And I mean... Web browsing, this little chip definitely has more than enough power, and this is the first Nook box, that tiny little PC. I've done a review on it. It's actually a pretty cool little product. Head over to their homepage. Using something like this for everyday web browsing will present no issues whatsoever. This little 8th generation i5 has more than enough power. Another thing I always like to test with these mini PCs is WebGL performance. We're using the Edge browser. So up at the top here, we have our FPS. 500 fish on screen right now, 1,000 still at 60, still at 65,000. Oh, and it even hit up 10,000. We got a little bit of a dip. 15,000, it will drop on down. 20,000. And the highest we can go here is 30,000. We're around close to 30 FPS. Not bad at all for what we're working with here. And the final thing I wanted to test here in the web browser was some 4K video playback from YouTube. Uh, if we're getting good performance here, you want to stream from Netflix, HBO Go, it should do it as long as we get good performance with YouTube. On the initial load in, we had a few drop frames, but overall it's hanging pretty steady here. And going into this, I had a good feeling that this 8th generation Coffee Lake CPU would handle 4K video playback.
So as you saw, 4K video streaming works out pretty well. Let's check out some native 4K playback. Got a test video here. We're gonna use the built-in media player. And yeah, this is one I always like to test. This is an HDR video, so it does look a bit washed out because my game capture won't do HDR. This is a 4K, 60 FPS, 68 megabits a second MP4. So yeah, I mean, going into this, I had a good feeling that this 8th generation i5 CPU would handle 4K really well. Now it's time to move over and see how this thing performs in benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 with a single core of 930 and a multi of 3229. Keep in mind, this is an 8th generation chip, so that single core is looking a bit low when you compare it to 10th or 11th generation Intel CPUs. And we're only working with 4 cores and 8 threads here. Next on the list, we have 3D Mark with Night Raid, total score 7,345. I also tested Firestrike with 1,794, and these are much better than the UHD 630 graphics, but this has nothing on the new XE graphics that are in the new 11th gen mobile CPUs. So we've got some video playback out of the way, web browsing, and some benchmarks. Now it's time to see how this thing handles gaming. So first up, we have Minecraft. This is just one I always like to test on these mini PCs. And as you can see here, up in the top left hand corner, we're running at 60. Got fancy graphics on, and we're at 14 chunks. You're not going to have any issues with a game like this, or even Roblox on this little machine. Next up, we have CSGO 900p low settings. I got an average of 58 FPS. I was actually hoping to see a little better out of this. And if you dropped it down to 720p, I'm sure it would definitely hike up that frame rate. But in the end, we're still working with those older Intel integrated graphics. So older stuff will work fine, but don't expect to play like GTA 5 at 1080p on something like this. And speaking of older games, here we have Skyrim, and I'm actually kind of impressed here. This is the original Skyrim, 1080p, with a mix of low and medium settings. We are at 60 here. I also wanted to test a little bit of emulation on the Nook Box too. So first up, we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. We're upscaled to 2560 by 1920, and it's going to handle it just fine. When it comes to this emulator, I mean, I didn't think we'd have any issues. Next up, we have some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. I just kept it with the OpenGL back end because as soon as I started this game here, Auto Mode Elista, which seems to be one of the harder ones to run, we were getting great performance even upscale to 1080p. Next on the list, we have PSP using PVSSPP. Vulcan back in, 3x resolution, Chains of Olympus running at full speed. So yeah, I mean, if you wanted to do some emulation on this machine, it will handle it. So when it comes to total system power consumption from the wall, this doesn't do a bad job. At idle, we're around 6.4 watts. 4K video playback does jump up quite a bit from idle to 17.6. Gaming, we average 34.3, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall in my extreme test was 47.2 watts. So overall, I think the Nookbox 2 does perform really well given the hardware we have here, but I think a lot of us might have been spoiled by the 11th gen Intel powered mini PCs and even the 4th gen Ryzen mini PCs that are on the market right now. Going from something like those to an 8th gen is a big downgrade, but if you're looking for a small form factor PC for email checking, 4K video playback, some light video editing, some photo editing, the Nookbox 2 might be a great option for you. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Nookbox 2, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.